Dr. Keith Taylor has an extensive background in law enforcement and emergency preparedness. His career encompasses a diverse range of positions, including his service as a retired NYPD sergeant, special assignment, and NYCD assistant commissioner. He currently works as an assistant professor of criminal justice at Don Jay College, where he imparts his knowledge and mentors further professionals in the field. Dr. Tyler holds a certification as a International Association of Emergent Management. Dr. Tyler earned a Bachelor's of Science degree from Howard University, followed by a Master's degree in Sociology from the City College of New York. He received a full scholarship to obtain a second Master's degree in National Security Studies from the Naval Postgraduate School. His doctorate is in education and from Columbia University Teachers College. And welcome, Dr. Keith Taylor. How are you today? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me on your program. I just wanted to say, uh, Shannon brought up a minute ago that he feels like this is a national security concern with how that there's possibly uh, government representatives, whether on their own time or their own dime, are in Wikipedia controlling the narrative and that there are suspicions that some of them hold um, significant position, at least one. So if, if, if there's any representatives out there, congressmen or whoever, that would like to you know who that is and look into that, I, you know, I'm not hard to find uh, how to contact me. You know, I can be found on Twitter. You know, Lou knows how to reach me, Lou Alzondo, uh, people like that. I'd be glad to provide that information. I think it's very compelling and it does need to be looked into. So, Keith, I, we've been talking about how, uh, you know, what I found out with uh, Wikipedia and the guerrilla skeptics. But you, you very eloquently stated last night on Disclosure Tonight how that affects the average person and what their expectations are and how it's not meeting that expectation. Can, can you kind of give the review of how you see what the problem is and what the perception of the public you know, of what the trust issue uh, concerns are with the uh, average sure. user? Okay. Well, yeah, and first of all, uh, Rob, I have to thank you for all the hard work that you've done. Clearly, that work has taken hundreds and hundreds of hours and focus to get us to the point where we can understand the uh, collusion that has taken place to uh, really game the Wikipedia system, so to speak. Now, let's think about mm -hmm. Wikipedia. Everybody uses it to just find out information about whatever topic it, it, it is that they they don't that they're interested in. And the expectation is that through all the efforts of volunteers, you're able to get some idea of the subject matter by reading Wikipedia and hoping that it is going to give you an objective perspective that shows both the positives and the negatives of the subject. But unfortunately for the general public, a group of individuals who wanted to really sort of in, impart their perspectives about various subjects decided to work together to use Wikipedia as the, the, the vehicle in which to subtly accomplish that goal. So what does that mean? That means that if you look at subjects that they feel are not legitimate, they you, you will read Wikipedia and it will be, in a sense, delegitimized by the language that's used to describe the subject, by the inferences that are made, the adjectives that are used uh, to basically mm -hmm. denigrate the person or subject matter or organization that is the subject of that Wikipedia focus. And so looking at how an ostensibly fair and objective edit editing process has been manipulated by a few or maybe 150 individuals to basically not allow for information to be included in Wikipedia that would go against their belief system is, is what has happened. And it's gotten to the point where they will create Wikipedia pages and not allow changes to those pages, even from the subjects of the pages. Uh, so let's say you have a someone who's a, maybe a scientist or a politician or whoever it is that they want to put the page up for. They'll make the page and then they'll put their skew on it, maybe even have wrong birth dates or, or birthplaces. Yeah. Um, and not allow the individual 
or any other individuals to make the corrections to it, which is clearly not the intentions of uh, the, the folks that started Wikipedia. Um, and so the editorial process has been sort of hijacked to not allow yeah. for an objective uh, accountability process to take place. And so when it comes to this particular issue of UAP, the, uh, the these individuals have worked hard to uh, diminish the reputations of the individuals that are fighting for government disclosure, fighting against government corruption, have, have uh, really sort of tried very hard to give the whole issue a black eye, to make it seem like it's a fringe uh, topic instead of something that should be treated with all the seriousness that this this issue requires so that is in a nutshell yeah. i mean but you yeah. know the nuts and bolts of how yeah. they are able to accomplish this it's a complex process and it requires a tremendous amount of patience effort and uh, commitment to unearthing how this uh this collaboration is is taking place and i think they call this particular group we're talking about i think they call themselves their nickname is some sort of cabal and that's how they act well, almost like a mafia. Wikipedia. yeah and their their facebook page is called the cabal that's a, a secret a, a private group where they and this is against um, wikipedia's rules uh they're not supposed to have an editor and pair up with another editor to edit pages together but uh that's called canvassing you're not supposed to canvas and get another editor to join you on a page that has the same opinion to try and gain the majority rule um but the, the gorilla skeptics well, have they have a monopoly right and they have a monopoly because of a weak accountability yeah. process uh it's sort of a scout's honor kind of uh system uh to make certain that this kind of collusion doesn't take place and you, you really need to have in an open system like wikipedia a very transparent process to make sure that the folks that are doing the editing are themselves held to a high level of accountability and not given the opportunity to collude in such a way that they are beyond reproach. Uh, and that is what has happened with these individuals. And despite your efforts to bring their work or misdeeds out to the public, they are still able to continue on as if they're bulletproof. And so I think yeah. public awareness is one thing, but there has to be tangible changes in the way that Wikipedia does business. Otherwise, um, they should not be treated as a credible source like um, that that would be used by, say, Google services or other. Yeah. other Cause, cause they're not, they are biased and they're an activist organization because the guerrilla skeptics have been in the news before. And even the, one of the founders, Jimmy Wales, knows of their existence and actually encourages them because, in his words, uh, that they're getting rid of lunatic charlatans and bunk and pseudoscience and uh, fringe. But they write the definitions of what all those are and the rules of how to deal with those. And if they can, if they put any of those labels on a page, then they then they have free reign to go as um, negative as they care to choose to offset because they claim that that is the mainstream consensus in, in mainstream uh, news outlets. So that gives them a mandate to try and fight back against all the credulous uh, news outlets and scientists and purveyors of bunk that they feel is their duty to deplatform anywhere that they can. They've even, you know, they'll go as far as to, you know, petition the courts, sue, sue like for, Alternative medicines to chiropractors and uh, acupuncture. Uh, they they go they consider that quackery and they go after uh, the whole um, professional community of that. Uh, that they try and get them removed um, from from practice. Uh, they petition governments to try and, and remove uh, alternative medicines, um, take away licenses for for things. And you know, as somebody that's had the, I've used a chiropractor most of my adult life. Um, I dare say that was a lot more healthy and useful than it was to have fusion surgeries that nearly killed me. Um, mainstream medicine ain't all it's cracked up to be. And Lucky Lily and Mick West are under the consensus that if it were legitimate medicine, then it would have a patent for it. Well, the patent process is extremely expensive and there's a huge bigotry of who uh, established pharmaceutical companies will allow you know, to, to exist in, in competition with them. So there's a lot of good alternatives out there 
that can't get patents for whatever reason, but are effective. Chiropractic is is extremely effective. Um, and so is acupuncture. I've had them, I've had both, and uh, that's not quackery in pseudoscience. Um, but you you can't argue it on the platform. They will ban you summarily. Right. Yeah. And and, and so uh, it, this becomes extremely troubling when you're talking about individuals who are not necessarily uh, particularly knowledgeable about a. The, the things that they're writing about. And uh, like if, if you have, for instance, an editor who is debating the, the legitimacy of a particular scientific theory or processes, and they have no scientific background, you can see where their belief systems might be guiding how they decide to mm-hmm. edit. And if they decide that something is considered quackery, regardless of what science says, then they write it in Wikipedia's quackery. And those who are practicing it as misfits or whatever it is that they, the terms that they use that are um, yeah. they, very degrading. They even, have, they even have pages that list out the names of people, basically naming and shaming. Anybody that's a purveyor of pseudoscience, bunk, fringe, whatever, they have lists on Wikipedia of people that advance that in the media, uh, scientists, you name it. If they if it, they come onto their radar, they go on a list. So yeah. it, it's and, like and the so early that, days of journey. Yeah, and so the, the the problem with that is you've got a group of people deciding what's fit to print for the rest of society to read, instead of Wikipedia being, say, a marketplace of ideas where the ideas can be judged based on the facts of of the matter. Instead, you have individuals that are deciding for the readers what's best for them. And that sounds like a sort of censorship uh, and and maybe not the uh, the best way for people to get information about things that they want to know. So uh, well, no, because there, there's no quality control apparatus um, in existence, and very few of these skeptics actually have degrees or knowledge in any of the topics that they're talking about. Uh, Susan Gerwick was a uh, J.C. Penney's photographer, and I think she has a a degree in uh, social science or I don't know something you know like philosophy. Who knows? But nothing in sciences. Um, to give her the qualification to be a science, she's a science consultant, uh, like like Mick West that labels himself as a science writer. She's a science consultant for these things because basically she pairs what she's been told and she has to take it on faith because she doesn't understand the science and she doesn't care about understanding the science. She trusts her handlers, like you know they have their their skeptic movement that started like in the '60s and. Uh, you know, we're we're talking about a radical uh, subset of, of skeptics. You know, regular skepticism is, is a useful tool uh, in science, but this is not what we're talking about. This is a radicalized group that are um, they're, they're they're they are nihilist atheists that that are um, secular humanists and they're anti theists where they actually go out and try to remove uh, religion from the planet because they consider it harmful to humanity. And also the belief in extraterrestrials. So if you believe in extraterrestrials and God, like I do, then I'm a heretic and I am not responsible to make any any decisions. They, and like Neil deGrasse Tyson stated on his Wikipedia page, he feels that science has been tremendously hindered by the belief in God and and, and by extension, uh, aliens, NHI or UFOs that have been in contact with our planet at any time in history. If you express any one of those beliefs, then he feels like uh, those beliefs have held back scientists and that also that it has caused people in government to do not make educated decisions so that they shouldn't be in power. And they have lobbyist groups that they pay uh, their financial showed about four hundred thousand dollars last year in lobbying money alone. And they had eight hundred thousand dollars for their library written off. So to, this is a small group. No, it's not. It is huge. And I would dare say that we have some globalist elites that are behind this funding it, bankrolling it. Um, there's the James Randi um, Foundation that, that was that is infusing a lot of money in the skeptical movement. It's a very large organization and very, very rigid. Uh, essentially, it, it's like organized religion. 
you know, they have their brand of it and they're in competition to remove the others from the playing field. Well, uh, you know, it's, it's very troubling when you have efforts to surreptitiously uh, infuse one's belief system into a process that's supposed to be objective and not favor one particular mm -hmm. view over the other. And if that's what they've been able to do, if they've had uh, financial support to push forth this vision of how they see the world and how they want to convert others or influence others to see the world as they do, then I see this is, you know, either either Wikipedia needs to provide a caveat or warning that it's not an objective uh, source of information, yeah. or they need to make the edit editorial decision-making process more transparent so that if someone suspects that there's collaboration taking place between editors or the editorial process, that that can be quickly and easily reviewed for objectivity by anyone who chooses to see it. And it should not, I, I, my understanding is that you are allowed to see edits as they, you know, as people do them you're allowed to participate in an editorial decision-making process, but they don't need to understand the topics that they're trying to change to favor their outlook on reality. They only need to understand the rules of how to use Wikipedia mm -hmm. and how to manipulate the editorial yeah. process. They trust, their, they trust their leader's dogma and then they advance it because I, I dare say Susan Gerwig doesn't know anything about physics, doesn't know anything about sciences. Um, medicine, you know, she likes to call herself the Wikipedia attrition. You know, that that is an inference that she has medical knowledge. Uh, at least that's what it connotates for me. You know, if somebody calls themselves a Wikipedia attrition, that tells me that they are, you know, practice medicine for children on Wikipedia. Um, that is not what she is. Um, she's not qualified to be writing the pages. And you're correct that people can participate, but what they do is they will protect the page. And you can write your suggestions on a talk page as long as you're polite about it. And they can be as rude as they want. But you can write in there what you would propose to put in that page and, and cite your sources. And they'll take an advisement. And if, if uh, they don't want to put it in there and you dare and try to edit it in if it's not protected, then if you try three, let's say a new editor comes on, this happens all the time. A new editor will try and edit in a well-sourced um, mainstream opinion and they will revert it immediately because they, they watch these pages and they had them rank, rank from A through F in order of importance. So say it's an F cat a category, it'll get immediate response. They will edit it back out. And if you do it three times and then they don't tell you that that's called edit warring, they will let you do it three times so they can ban you from the platform. If you're a new editor, you're, gone, you're done. You're banned for life. Now this, now this is regard, we're banned for life. Now this is regardless of your, experiential knowledge or licenses or certifications about the subject. The, that means that, let's say I am a, uh, a national security professional and I see something about my, prof my, my personal biographical information on Wikipedia that's mm -hmm. inaccurate, and I try to correct it, then those who want to manipulate the process can have me banned after I've tried three times to correct it and gotten rejected by the non-national security professionals that have created the webpage and have decided what is allowable on my webpage. So even something as oh, simple as my, my birthplace or birth date could be mm -hmm. held hostage by these yeah. individuals who don't know necessarily because, my Because you're not considered a repeatable source for yourself. Right. Uh, you, you're not considered. And if you, you can edit your page, if you edit your own page and at their discretion, um, they can ban you for the first time out. So if you if you go on there and you have a page about you and you make one edit and they find out that that is you, um, they can block you from the platform. So they have threatened people on that I've seen on Twitter that have edited their, uh, like you know, Tim, the Rear Admiral, uh, Tim Galladay, his son was editing his page, trying to correct it. And they were issuing stern warnings. And Matt Ford made a edit on his page, and they're like, "Oh, we should investigate that." 
he's admitting that he's edited his own page and that's against Wikipedia guidelines. Well, yeah, um, on Neil deGrasse Tyson's page, he states that he edited his own page to correct it. They glorify that. They have, they are not fair in how they apply the rules because, you know, you have to, you have to be a certain notoriety to even have a Wikipedia page. So if right. you don't, then they'll delete it. You know, if you even try to start a, a start one, they will, they will eradicate it. But they give uh, what they call fluff pages, um, they go in all the time and they did this to, to we saw this with Ross Coldhart, we saw this with Al Putoff, we saw this with George Knapp, Jeremy Corbell, um, Lou Elizondo, David Grush, on down the line. The, and Tim Galladay's page, they went in and stripped it down. They, and uh, Gary and Owen a little bit, they're, they're terrified of him. They keep dialing down their their, their positive attributes to, to where they're the most mundane. And they do this with all the topics that they that they want to eradicate. Like every UFO page, they'll just keep chipping away a little bit of time until it's you know it's just a barely a paragraph left. But um, so, on their so own they're, Wikipedia they're pages, focused, like for Susan Kirby. Now you you were talking well, about uh... page. And, Mick West page, if you compare them to, to Lou Elizondo's or David Grush's, um, look at the stark contrasting difference. Theirs are what you would define as a flood page. And like Neil deGrasse Tyson, those are shrines to skeptics that that they it's like a resume and a who's who in there. You know, even, you know like when they got a haircut last and stuff. It, it's just it's the definition of what they call fluff. And you know, they they did that to Tim Galladay in December where they went and looked at oh this you know because he he came out on the news so they decided it's time to attack him now because he came out on Soul Foundation dared to show his face and speak in a positive way that that uh, NHI and uh, you know, UAP uh, are not possibly human origins. So then they systematically set to whittle his page down as mundane as they could but things like Susan Gervis page and Mick West somebody tried to edit in a little bit of criticism to the Mick West page they didn't allow it they blocked it no, no yeah, criticism from the Mick West yeah that's interesting that because they don't like a particular message that an individual is purveying they will do what they can to denigrate his information on Wikipedia do they put yeah. false information on those pages or just they omit, make a lot of uh, important information like you touched on earlier um susan gerbeck the, the queen of the gorilla skeptics she created while i was on this page and she helped create um david grush's claims page there was a david grush page initially but they didn't want to give him the decency of his own page and merit he doesn't rank it only his claims do his public interest because lucky Louis discussed it and david grush is not an interesting enough person to to rank a uh, wikipedia page you know i guess he should have been a hairdresser or a, a jc penny photographer or a game a video game programmer instead and he would have had a very nice lustrous wikipedia page but instead being the most senior intelligence officer and veteran to ever come forward whistleblowing on when you know possibly one of the largest national security concerns in our history um that is not notable uh, his claims are because they want to debunk them and they want to highlight them and then they'll systematically set out to find every mainstream article that they can find that talks criticism against them so and to answer your question they don't themselves necessarily op-ed opinions of injecting negativism they will go find a reputable source out of the media and then they will use their words to criticize them and if they're a credible source they don't even if it's an op-ed it's okay they can, they can right. they put it in there because they're a trusted right. source okay but a trusted source doesn't mean qualified source so why isn't there a process to verify that whoever's making these changes mm -hmm. is qualified to do so why not have say a verifiable ed editor process where they've shown through some sort of uh, verification process that they're licensed or somehow qualified to write about a particular subject. Otherwise, you could have anybody write whatever they want based on their beliefs. So then it becomes a, an opinion yeah, page, yeah. not not based on yeah, fact. Exactly. So then they portray the narrative the way they want to skew it. And like I said earlier, they will solicit a CSI fellow to go write an article about it or one of their affiliated journalists. And they'll get mainstream consensus to have articles that go hard against these people and then edit it into the platform. And in some instances, it's the same person because you can have, I have found where an editor like Lucky Louie that I am convinced is Mick West and I, am, I have evidence, but Mick West wants extraordinary evidence for extraordinary claims and I am going to provide that for him. But that is, he is not the main focus right now. It's the overall organization, the damage they're doing. He's, he's secondary to that. So 
so he can wait on that. Uh, I will I will take care of that soon enough. Um, well, one of the things I think uh, may be important to note is the harm that is done, not just to the general public that are sold a bill of goods that Wikipedia is providing them with objective information, but also to individuals and their professional reputations if something that is mm -hmm. uh, inappropriate or not factual is placed on Wikipedia and not allowed to be corrected. And these changes are made and upheld by strangers who mm -hmm. are supposed to, I guess, be anonymous and, but but that is no guarantee that whatever is being put into these pages reflects reality. It just there's no quality control to verify. There's no quality control to verify that any editor is qualified to be making the edits that they do. Uh, and, so, and especially factual matters of science, medicine, they're not qualified. Okay, so let's say that, all right, we write off the fact that Wikipedia has inaccurate information. There's a lot, you know, it's not really held to any kind of editorial standard that can be provable in the way that, say, academic journals might be. What, what kind of, how is it used by, say, online services to provide information? Like, if you're on YouTube and you see that there is a video about a controversial topic. Is it possible that Wikipedia might pop up with a post stating this information, you know, this video, this topic may be, um, how exactly does yeah, that work? Contentious topic. Well, YouTube is contracted with in Wikipedia to use them as a, as a, um, as a, as a source of accurate information. So like if you're, if there's um, a YouTube video on anything to do with UFOs or um, catastrophism, like with Randall Carlson, electric universe that, you know, there may be di electrical discharges, it'll pop up a Wikipedia page to show them what the real information is, but that's subjective to the editors and their agendas. It's not been proven to be neutral and that there's any sort of quality control. It's assumed that there is an inferred because that was the original vision of Wikipedia was that it was going to be striving to be balanced and, and strive for accuracy in, in their information. But it's dynamic. You can't. It's not only inaccurate in a lot of things. There are agendas by, by different states in there. There's agendas by different religions. There's different. You even have, uh, I mean, the, the competition is fierce on there. You will have different media companies paying people to edit uh, other competition pages to dial them down and pump theirs up. Um, it, it's a fraught pay-to-play platform. It's basically what's yeah. turned into. It's a Wild West shooting gallery. So so it, why not? Why wouldn't you, uh, YouTube or Google services use a established uh, source like Encyclopedia Britannica, for instance, as opposed to Wikipedia, which is sort of an open source, anything goes Wild Wild West. You may or may not get accurate information. Why not? use an actual source that's held to a standard because you don't have that same kind of influence able to ostensibly uh, skew the information in a Encyclopedia Britannica or their competitor. competitor yeah. uh, you have qualified people writing entries in those encyclopedias. They are fact-checked and they have to be accurate and peer-reviewed in a lot of instances. But I think it's the, you know, it, Wikipedia came alive in the early days of the internet and it was, you know, brilliant marketing early on and developed a reputation for being, you know, striving for uh, neutrality, fairness, and accuracy was, was what the goals were. And in the good spirit of, of iron sharpens iron, that there would be, you know, debates among editors and, you know, in, in, the, in the aggregate, the, the, the trend would be that they would be towards the accuracy of, of Britannica and such platforms. But that vision has long sailed uh Larry Sanger, um, the other co-founder, has written three articles in the last three years talking about how biased the platform is. But prior to what I found out, evidently, uh, guerrilla skeptics have been in the media before uh, with complaints against them, but it was never brought up before and exposed to where, how, you know, what exactly they're doing uh, on a large scale to do harm uh, and how organized they are and entire topics are locked down by them that they control the narrative. So it wasn't quantified before on the scale or scope. And I think that's the difference now is that there was the expectation that they would have that fair and balanced and accurate information. And I think in good faith, Google and YouTube and any other large user consumer of their platform, they have that tradition of expectation of that. Well, nobody has broke that expectation before now. So 
their reputation has carried them this far. And, you know, we're just now, you know, with the team that, that is evolving and expanding and, you know, fortunately to have, you know, you helping contribute uh, your insights that, that are invaluable as well. Um, you know, we're getting the message out that if Wikipedia doesn't want to reform, the people at least need to know what, the honest interpretation of what Wikipedia represents. And that is the minimal goal that we're establishing here, but reform uh, and, and to, frankly, to get the girl skeptics off Wikipedia. They, you know, they are against the own rules that they write. So, so, so let's talk a little bit about the level of uh, collusion or collaboration that goes on. Do these individuals, are they just people who meet online or do they meet in person? Are there any events that they have to help network and plan things and strategize best practices to mm -hmm. uh, surreptitiously change things on Wikipedia. What what kind of history does, is involved with that? Because I know you've done a little bit of uh, research into their organization. Well, I found a lot of these uh, editors that I've isolated, many have been on the platform from say around 2003, 2005. The guerrilla skeptic proper terminology came into existence around 2010. And they admitted that they have a, which is also, you're not supposed to, you're not supposed to canvas and have, you're not supposed to develop a group of editors that are, that are editing pages to get consensus and majority rule. That's against the rules. They will ban you for that. I've seen it happen all the time, but they have their Facebook group that's private called the Cabal or the Secret Cabal, where they have training and she even uh, issues through their Committee for Skeptical Inquiry. She writes, Susan Gerber writes articles on how they, they take their skeptic articles that are written and they reverse edit Wikipedia, which means that whenever they can get one of their fellows to generate a skeptical article, they task their editors, which is about 150 acknowledged guerrilla skeptics, to go into Wikipedia and find any page that they can insert that information into as a reliable source to get their dogma as as spread out as far as they can. They hold workshops, they have skeptic camps, they have week monthly conventions, they they pay for their article they get paid for their articles, they get pay they pay their bloggers. So this is this is a big industry. There's a lot of money moving in this organization. Now I I have a bit of a pet peeve uh, because I think of skeptics, people that are uh, looking objectively at the facts. And I think of debunkers that are looking to defend their belief system by ignoring mm -hmm. the facts. And so is it fair to call these individuals skeptics or should they be no. called debunkers? The, the vernacular that um, Craig Weiler, who's been pushing back on them for over a decade, yeah, he, he calls them pseudo-skeptics and, and, and debunkers. But uh, that would be a you know, we, we're trying to change the vernacular that we use to distinguish between a, a, a legitimate skeptic, which is vital to the process, versus a pseudo-skeptic that is pushing dogma. And that's what we recognize with guerrilla skeptics, is they are adhering to a rigid set of beliefs from their founding members, kind of like what um, communism did with Stalin uh, and, you know, and Xi Ping in China with, with their founders. Um, they enshrine them they have conventions in their name each year they they publish they post works they glorify them so basically they have their their cult leaders that they follow their tenets of and carry on their their dogma so they, they have essentially set up a religion and there are no warnings by wikipedia that their information that is on their web pages might be biased based on the activities of debunkers like the uh, gorilla skeptics there's no caveat because i know that probably Nothing. all different age ranges in fact there's, there's denial people. because they have they've been at yeah. right so what mm -hmm. what can be done i know that there have probably been a few lawsuits yeah uh, there, there's there's no libel defamation no warning labels and our activists so i i imagine that if uh, wikipedia were considered some sort of publishing house uh, that they would be held to a, a, a different standard in terms of containing information that could be defamatory towards individuals. But because uh, they're they're not under yeah, the same science rules. fiction or no, they they don't they don't but, have it. They they claim that they claim that they are like Facebook and Twitter that they are not responsible for the the content of what people put onto their platform. That is how they've gotten out of lawsuits before. But the difference is this time, Jimmy Wales knows that the guerrilla skeptics are on the platform and that 
he even argued into existence the need for them in 2006. I found a blog of his where he stated that he needed that it was good for the platform to have a group of of uh, informed editors that were looking after the interests of Wikipedia that could override the, you know, the otherwise democratic process. Yeah, but What's informed that? by whom, or informed by whom, or by what? Well, what standard is he using to, to make that? He re- there case. is no standard. He just inferred that they are knowledgeable on what they're articulating on and left as that. There, there is no vetting process. There's no fact check process for of a user to go in and make sure that they're qualified to make the edits that they do and that the group that he allowed to exist on the platform, that they are qualified somehow to, to be uniquely allowed this monopoly on the platform. Um, there is no quality control for that. There is no verification process. You just got to take his word for it. He's complicit to allow the, the, the systematic character assassination on the platform to continue and take place against people and entire topics that they disagree with, that he considers lunatic charlatans. They have a mandate to to debase them as hard as they can. Because once they get the label, label of fringe, skept- or, or if they put the label of fringe, pseudoscience, or bunk, or then that gives them, uh, then that gives them the, a right to break the neutrality rule that they have on Wikipedia, that they can then go as hard against that person or that topic as possible. Like we see with, you know, they, uh, they, they write that they don't follow the news, they don't break the news, and they're not reporters. They wait back and they wait for things to mature in the media before they edit things. Well, Lucky Louie is already editing the Arrow page today with the new Pentagon report and crowing like a little uh, canary that uh, no evidence of aliens exists and it's all bunk and it's all tied back to this whole group of, of credulous believers that have tricked Congress no evidence uh, into believing that there's NHI and you know, non-human intelligences and uh, craft that are not made by humans that we are encountering and that is in possession of our government. But see, we go back to the IG report, the, the ICIG complaint that David Grush submitted with others that they found that that was credible and urgent. It wasn't just that there was, um, it wasn't about the repri- reprisals alone that they tried to claim the people that are trying to uh, dismiss this as anything uh, to do with aliens, life, or non-human intelligences, or UFOs, whatever. They they reject that the ICIG found it credible and urgent that the two tenets David Grush advanced was that the government, that there was a, a UFO crash retrieval program that's been in place for for decades that is operating off the books without congressional oversight and that uh, the U.S. government is in possession of alien craft and bodies and that are in tied up in SAP programs with um, corresponding aerospace partnerships that are reverse engineering and hold these technologies um, exclusively within themselves. Um, if David were lying under oath, his report would not have made it that far. And I would dare say the IG, ICIG and the intelligence, the Gang of Eight, they wouldn't have written the laws that they did, like the Schumer Amendment, if they didn't have some form of proof to back up what they were saying. It's not just cool stories told to staffers and they believed it. And that's what even even this Arrow report. There's no there's hardly any facts in it. It's a, it's a historical archive. But he Kirkpatrick lists out well, witness one said this, and witness two said that, and based on their testimony, which they don't trust me, bro. Um, there's no UAPs, there's no alien life, and there's no crash retrieval program, which even the wording was interesting because if you read it verbatim, it basically states that there is no crash retrieval program that has not been reported to Congress. So it doesn't say it doesn't exist. It just says that there hasn't been one that hasn't been properly reported to Congress. So the Gang of Eight could know about it and not the rest of Congress or even a couple on the Gang of Eight, and that would be acceptable. Uh, like Mike Turner, who's tried to crush every um, advancement of uh, that we're not alone. And it keeps coming back to, like Lou said, and like David said, this is potentially the biggest uh, national security risk that we have because our government fundamentally is there to establish uh, the, the national defense. If, until we know what we're dealing with, we can't treat it as mundane. We don't know that. And that's dangerous. So, so a skeptic would have to include in the art article on Wikipedia about this subject, about UAP, information about wrong, possible wrongdoing and whistleblowers and the allegations that have been made, the official narrative by, uh, by, by the Department of Defense. Kind of reminds me of mm-hmm. uh, 
let's say we were talking about a local police department. You're talking about a local police department and they are denying that uh, corrupt sorry, they are denying that corruption exists. Even as they deny that corruption exists, mm -hmm. you have community members that are wit witnessing police corruption and you're also having um, complaints being made and you're having other things that are happening, perhaps other agencies that are, um, are witnessing the corruption of these police officers. And yet, and yet the, the leadership states that there's no corruption going on that they're aware of, even though all of these mm -hmm. other, these other uh, indicators reflect that there are. And then you have a whistleblower, a police officer that says, you know what, I'm aware of all this corruption that's taking place. And the official narrative is we don't, we don't know anything about it. And, and so what these Wikipedia editors are reflecting is that we're not going to pay attention to legitimate complaints of corruption. We are just going to uh, follow the official narrative because that aligns with our belief system of the, yeah. I don't know, the, yeah. the, uh, the uh, sanctimony of law enforcement. The belief system. Accept or reject in their, wor in, their, in, their, in their holistic worldview paradigm. If it doesn't fit their, their worldview, it gets excluded with, with malice. So it boils yes. down to what can be done to force Wikipedia to correct the problems that they have with holding the editors accountable to provide objective guidance uh, and, and to disallow the manipulation of the editorial process to favor particular perspectives. And so would it require, say, I don't know, a long Congress that would demand that you know, uh, information providers like Wikipedia provide some sort of um, warning that they can't guarantee the accuracy of any of the information that they provide mm -hmm. or, or that they have some sort of process that allows anyone who wants to see uh, show that their editorial decision making is not skewered or colored by any particular person or persons or organizations. What, what could be a possible solution to make Wikipedia live up to its name? I think it was it called Title 230, where internet platforms like Facebook, Twitter, and Wikipedia claim that they, whoever publishes on their platform, they are not responsible for what they write and what they publish. But like what we're going to have to have some congressional inquiries, and I think that the academic, the higher education academic community, like colleges, which I don't know what those organizations would be to have a collective, uh, like a, like say for a congressional hearing, what would be the equivalent in, in higher education so that colleges to get together and convene to discuss this? Because, you know, they're in the business of educating people with facts and, and correct worldviews, you know, and to, to send them out, you know, to the world that are educated on, on, the, on the reality of what's factual to the best of their knowledge. And they need inquiries into this uh, so platform. Uh, Jimmy Wales knows that they are not being neutral and that they are biased, and they even brag about being biased. So the world needs to recognize that Congress needs to call it for what it is. Do they still deserve Title 230 um, protections when they have knowingly allowed uh, the systematic hijacking and uh, monopoly of their platform? I don't think that they should be allowed that because they are defaming people. They are defaming entire topics. They are political political activists. There's a lot of you know they they tried you know, they brought uh, Facebook and Twitter in a few years ago because they were uh, affect you know they were um, skewing the elections using their platforms and such. Um, I, I think a, a inquiry needs to take place, and if Wikipedia doesn't want to change. They need the consumer needs to be aware of what their platform actually consists of climbing to the floor of a congressional hearing and getting them exposure to to the you know to the world basically not just your citizens because this affects this, this affects every nation in the world where they have a presence in in the on the internet um, to any degree people the it's, consumers need to know that this is not fair and balanced and that they if they want accurate information they need to go to an actual encyclopedia because this is an urban um free for all um political and, and theist activist organization uh, wikipedia mirrors what the cfi foundation consists of a group of people that hold some rigid beliefs and and to 
you know, they're going to have to reform or they're going to be labeled for what they are. And I think that they should you know, look, we should look into their, uh, their five status as a charitable organization and see if they still fit those charters. Same thing with Committee for Inquiry that is leading this, this group of, of pseudo skeptics. Well, I also wanted to mention, you're talking about individual consumers, like students or, or uh, others that, you know, consume. But what about corporate consumers? Should YouTube and Google and these other corporate consumers that use Wikipedia information to provide an objective stance on various controversial subjects, should they be using it if it's not an objective source? Uh, I so would want, I'd like to see if there's any contractual agreements available of what I'd like to I'd like to see what the argument for YouTube is of what how they uh, derived to use Wikipedia. What was the decision making process to come to the conclusion that Wikipedia would be a fair platform to use to inform their consumers with? Um, I would like to see why they what they wrote about that and why Google came up in the algorithms to, for Wikipedia to now be one of the first generated hits. When you when you do a search, you know why is it why is that why is this tool Wikipedia being the number one tool being pushed or, or do the does you know I guess it comes back to intent and and knowledge are they complicit and uh, knowing that they're not that they are biased and not uh, so accurate or or do they have good faith that they have an accurate platform which I think is the latter that they assume that there's um, a striving for being unbiased and a striving for being accurate but. I don't think uh, Wikipedia is delivering on that. And that's what I, I want to get out to, to, you know, the government, to the consumer and, and to these large industries that in good faith, I think, are using their platform and they are not producing the product they think that they are, that they're getting. They're not getting what they think they are in, in return. So that that's a very interesting point. I'm going to look at uh, pretty quick to see what YouTube, how they derived it using Wikipedia and on what grounds. Right, uh, because I've seen, you know, sort of uh, warnings um, from Encyclopedia Britannica, uh, not even warnings, but just sort of, you know, a note that this particular topic, um, you know, these are the mm -hmm. issues or uh, to be concerned about. I've seen Encyclopedia Britannica uh, citations, but then I've also seen Wikipedia citations, and but the two are not the same. They're not held to the same standard. Mm -hmm. And frankly, if you've got these um, cabals, as they call themselves, going in and changing the content to reflect their particular viewpoints, then that means that that's being reflected on whatever Google or YouTube or any of the other uh, uh, social media mm -hmm. companies that use uh, Wikipedia. It's being transported to them as well. And so that that's the concern mm -hmm. that they, they're getting a... Uh, damaged goods um, under the guise of objective yeah, I, um, data. I think what, what you're referring that? to on some of those pages that you pop into on Wikipedia is that it'll say this article needs improvement or this article needs verified. What it's saying is we need better sources and we need more sources to, to edit into this topic. It was enough to start a page with, but they need, in a lot of instances, if the mainstream is pushing away from what they're reflecting in their page, they'll start sitting for more mainstream sources. And I, I found many instances of this where they're directly asking other editors, hey, if you can find any more, we can shore it up better because you know, it may not have it to begin with or that they're getting too much uh, mainstream pushback of an opposing narrative. And they don't want to edit that in, so they need to keep the super majority by uh, editing in as, as much mainstream uh, sources that supports their narrative. So they will put those labels on there for, for, to solicit for better information that supports their narrative. Now, now I'm imagining that uh, the uh, you know the, these skeptic debunker groups would say that the problem is not with the information or narrative that they're providing the the problem is that people don't understand the rules with which the editing takes place and so if they mm -hmm. simply understood the process they would understand that it's uh, difficult to manipulate is that true is that the case no and i have put out many many tweets now where i have shown examples of that and i cite and i publish links and there have been and i ask people do not take my word for this go check for yourselves and verify that uh, what i'm saying is accurate and you had a person that's 
that was a that is a college uh, professor in California uh, at Irvine that went in and attempted to edit a page, and he found out really quick of the Chola on uh, Twitter. I think you watched that happen unfold as well. He tried to, in good faith, argue some edits into the Uf the Pentagon UFO page, and uh, even brought in Ryan Graves and to be a credible source. And you know, lucky Lily, you know, same talking points as Mick West. Imagine that. They won't. They do not allow pilot testimony because they're not a good authority on on information. They are not a credible source because they can't trust their eyes. You know, our Top Gun pilots that are the best in the world. They, they, they can track. You know, they can recognize the silhouette of a plane from the skyline from its shadow that they're trained to, to recognize, but they can't recognize the difference between a balloon and a like say the Tic Tac that's the size of a school bus. Um, and it's in its relative speed, like with Ryan Graves, with the with what they saw um, that were moving. You know, some of them were sitting parked at 120 knots for hours, you know, persistently. Uh, then you had the Roosevelt that had them raining down on them. Um, that were not not Chinese drones, but they infer that it is on the page. They tried to edit those into the page. But we've had several people on Twitter try to go in and correct pages, and uh, like with George Knapp's page, uh, the the pleasant uh, person I met recently, Ali, that I did the interview with on Coast to Coast AM recently, she shared her experience of trying to edit George Knapp's page and correct the information on it. And she inadvertently ran to these uh, guerrilla pseudo skeptics that ended up banning her from the page because she dared to go against their narratives and put in accurate information. So it's been tested and it continues to be tested. And I, I am sure I watch I watch new editors get banned every day. So I know there are people testing this out that I have not heard from and I contact me. And I apologize for people on Twitter if I've not gotten back to you on your DMs or your comments. I'm just way oversaturated trying to keep up with all this. And I promise I will get back as quickly as I can with people. But this has been a little overwhelming for me, but I'm not going to back down off of it. They need to continue to test this hypothesis. Don't take my word for it. Go down my timeline, find my Wikipedia uh, posts, and check my work. Go and try and edit a page. You know, we, you know, have a good, re reliable source. And even if it's uh, in line with their narrative, good luck. But don't do it three times or you're going to get banned permanently from the platform. So, Rob, let's talk about their impact. Is, it, is this something that where they've just had a focus on a small set of topics that they don't agree with or have they had a much larger impact what do they say about their impact they say that the gorilla skeptics proper that acknowledge that they're gorilla skeptics was led by susan gerbic she has stated as of february 2024 they control over 1500 pages that have reached over 100 that have had 150 million page views thus far that's tremendous uh, and that they they state that wikipedia is their number one source for pushing their global agenda so it can be understated the impact that they are having on multiple topics um, anything to do with alternative medicines physics that they don't agree with the, the uap topic parapsychology community there's a very large list i, I wasn't prepared to have it with me today uh, probably should have but it's not just ufos it's just it's not just parapsychology or or alternative medicine it's, it is a litany of topics that they reject, and they have lists on Wikipedia of what are listed as contentious uh, topics, um, quackery, pseudoscience, and bunk. So labels for all this, they have labels for all the people on it. Yeah, if this were replicated 100 years ago, they would be burning books in the village square, square and they would get, be getting people disappeared from their jobs, or fired, excommunicated, uh, anything they could do to eradicate their competition because like what they're doing with uh, theology, they, they are weaponizing and going after it with with uh, lawyers and uh, activists to, to spread propaganda um, of their faith. They even have workshops on how to recover from from belief in a god. So if you want to abandon your faith and go nihilist and believe that all is for nothing, then join their cult, and they will put you through workshops to where you can uh, learn how to not believe in anything and that life has no meaning whatsoever. And embrace it. Uh, it, it's, it, it. I can't even. I can't logically understand the, the mindset behind that. Even so, for uh, let's say a, a field like psychology that is licensed by states, a hundred years ago, when it was a newer field, presumably a hundred years ago, maybe a little longer, 
it was a newer field and not widely accepted, then people like this would have gone along and said that's quackery and that, uh, mm -hmm. you know, we, we should defame psychologists for the, uh, mm -hmm. you know, practicing not untruthful, whatever, uh, uh, processes. What about something like you said, acupuncture? Isn't that also licensed by various states? Maybe they're yeah, they, they, they do reject um, that. There are different diagnoses for psychology that they reject, like, for instance, uh, multiple personality disorder or dissociative identity disorder, it's now called, they reject that that is actual, um, a, a, a um, diagnosis. psychological diagnosis. They reject that, that is accurate. So on, you can, and I'm going to have to verify that. So don't take me as the gospel, but I'm fairly certain I read recently where they, on the, on the multiple personality disorder, they consider that um, bunk, that that doesn't exist. But it's so, in the DSMB. So it's been proven. D but they also like the to answer your question. Statistical manual. So, so you and I, we're not psychologists, and so if we were to talk about it, we're talking as laypersons. But we wouldn't go and try mm -hmm. and parlay that as a source of credible information for the general public to utilize. And yet, that's no. what's happening with Wikipedia. Mm -hmm. So you have these yeah. non-credentialed individuals with very specific belief systems that are skewing the editorial process to uh, provide um, very unfortunate uh, perspectives on Wikipedia content itself, mm -hmm. which is uh, problematic. Yeah. And so what kind of rules does Wikipedia have for organized cabals that are operating like the guerrilla skeptics? Well, I mean, I know they have uh, rules uh, for individual yep. transgressors or perhaps a few people that are colluding, but what do they have in place for large-scale uh, collusion? As far as I found, the guerrilla skeptics are the only group that's ever been brought up to admin boards, and uh, they, they've been brought up a few times, and it's actually against Wikipedia policy, everything they're doing. They're canvassing, they're colluding, they are controlling narratives, they're controlling entire topics, but Jimmy Wales... Um, condones it when it was brought out in the media the, uh, a couple of years ago for the last time around. And he advocated that they were serving a function and the admin board, which there again, um, when they go to arbitration committees and, and such, they have their own admin, senior admins that are on those panels. So they are given a pass. They were told to be that, and, and they're not supposed to be talking about uh, including to edit Wikipedia pages off the, off of uh, Wikipedia. You're supposed to do that on the talk page. Scouts on. That way everything's yeah. out in the open. You see everything's discussed. Yeah. It's not. They're doing it on their Facebook page in private, and uh, they are breaking. I, they kick people off the platform literally every day for the same rules there. The last arbitration I read is that they determined, well, they are, they are doing more good for the platform than they are harm, so we're going to let them we're going to let them stay and we're going to tell them to play more nice with people and be more open in, in how you're coordinating your efforts together, um, which is just canvassing. So say, basically be more nice on how you're canvassing. Right. Yeah, you uh, just have to do as I say, not as I do. Mm -hmm. you know? Yes, exactly. They, the rules do not apply to them. They, may, they literally make the rules. They have their own senior admins in these, in these uh, inquiries. So how are you... You know, when you own the, the when you are the sheriff um, and you're having an inquiry and you bring in your deputies and you're on the board yourself as the sheriff, there, you know, we went, we saw this happen with uh, the DOE in the 90s when uh, Bill Clinton uh, administration found that, uh, that the DOE were playing fast and loose with securing our nuclear secrets and completely uh, no, no oversight whatsoever. So they had they did an eight year study and finally placed external oversight like with the IG process to bring them into some kind of compliance and uniformity to what their charter is supposed to be in good faith to that. So they had to bring in you can't self police. You don't put the fox in the hen house and try and get it to play by the rules. It's just not going to do it. This this is a broken system and people need to realize that any topic or page that they want to control, they do. There is no resistance to them. I've seen admins, senior admins try to go up against them. Some of them have been there 18 years. They have a you know 100,000, 150,000 edits, which is large. You get 
banned from from the platform for daring to challenge them because uh, there is no you can't you uh, can't bring in an editor to back you up. Now you have been on a number of different programs, uh, ringing the, the, the or raising the issue to the general public. What do you think the most effective way, other than just engaging the public and letting them know that this problem exists, what do you think might be done or could be done to effectively stop them in their tracks? Would it require legislation? There's going to have to be some kind of large scale. Yeah, I think something on the order of that. Let me give this cop drop. Edit that out, Shannon. Um, there, there's going to need to be something on the scale of a congressional inquiry or an academic uh, higher education panel through like colleges or uh, a major media outlet, say like Tucker Carlson or somebody to run a news segment on this and, and have a panel of, say, um, you know, college professors or, or senior board members that are that are educated on on the scope of this topic and uh, to to uh, go through what the implications are of this and what it means and how it affects the uh, the, the the average consumer and the other businesses that rely on them and frankly uh, how it affects higher education and national security interests because they're they are negatively impacting all these so what, what and also the- I think uh, the legal act- there are legal inquiries being made, and I don't want to articulate on it. Uh, and I know there are a few independent uh, venues of legal eyes that are looking at this. So there, there is strong uh, support uh, to, to make the case that this is an organized defamation, uh, like a class action lawsuit, um, because the way they have coordinated uh, to go after specific people for specific reasons and the foundation knows about it. Jimmy Wells knows about it. It's condoned. So they are they are an activist organization. They are like an organized, um, you know, I hate to say it, organized crime is what it reminds me of a syndicate, like a mafia type uh, organization. So in terms so, of the internal policies, who's watching the watchers to make sure that this collusion doesn't take place? Who's managing quality control? Who's no being, holding everyone accountable, keeping everyone honest in the process itself? What what does that look? No like? one. That's that that's the alarming. That was what alarmed me when I first looked at this. No one's in charge. What's that? No one's in charge. The 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 the, the, the guerrilla skeptics are in charge. They do what they want to do. They, they try. They they show some restraint of what would be publicly not. Um, would not cast them in a good light. So they, they are very um, well skilled at this. They've been at this a long time, nearly 20 years. So of course they have honed their skills and their trade craft to fly under the radar until now, at least to get away with this with impunity. And I have seen many senior uh, admins retire because they were tired of bumping heads with, with the, frankly, the cabal, uh, the gorilla skeptics, the gorilla roost, you know, they own any topic that they want. And any editor that dares challenge them, they swarm them, and it's it's mob rule. They will, you know, they will bring them up to admin boards. They don't even have to do that. They can just ban them. You know, they can they can claim, well, you know, if it smells like a duck, walks like a duck, and they actually have a rule of that. You know, um, WP duck. Um, basically, the test of well, you act like you're a sock puppet. We think you are, and we're going to ban you, even though we don't have evidence. They don't need evidence. They just throw out whatever you know, whatever label they want and why they ban them. And that's that. You have no recourse. And for living persons with their bi- biography page, there's no number to call. There's no recourse for them. There's no way to get justice and correct the record. If you have your page, say like you have a page, like what happened with Lou Elizondo. You know, it, it took years to get the place of birth uh, corrected on there because they kept citing that their source was the most accurate. So thank you very much for helping um, get that corrected because they were they were sticking to their number one source of that particular article in that in that media outlet and thankfully you were able to get the record corrected um, so they had no recourse but to change it to Texas and then they acted like well we were just waiting on, on a reliable source well they've had multiple reliable sources to state that he lived in Texas they multiple times well, yeah, they I, covered it but they wanted they wanted some media but, outlet to correct itself in order for them to accept the changes that he is stating are accurate about himself. They needed the media outlet 
to or that, correct or that, its or that, mistakes. Or that a reliable media source could, yeah, or that a reliable media outlet would cover Lou stating that he was born in Texas. And if it were a reputable source, then they would go with that. But it had to be more reputable than their uh, Herald Tribune source, which to date, well, what's, no one was able to rise to that uh, challenge. So explain what, what you did. Yeah, I simply wrote to them and asked them if they could correct their article uh, because there is a mm-hmm. mistake about uh, Mr. Elizondo's place of birth. And um, in Wikipedia, it reflects that same incorrect information. And in order for it to be corrected, the article has to be corrected. And so mm-hmm. the, the same documentation that Mr. Elizondo offered the folks at Wikipedia, I think it might have been some like a, a, mm-hmm. a, a yeah. license or yeah. a passport, whatever, that yeah, was sufficient passport. for the newspaper to correct its mistake. And then the Wikipedia editors, once they were made aware that the newspaper had corrected itself, then they, uh, well, not they, I think, what was her name? Uh, uh, Susan Gerbic. Gerbil, Gerbil, what's yeah. her name? Gerbic. Susan Gerbic, Gerbic. she's the head of the girl yeah. skeptics in the CSI yeah. uh, so, corresponding organization. So, and so then she announced publicly, oh, we made the change to Mr. Elizondo's webpage because the paper corrected yeah. itself. At, but the fact that Mr. Elizondo was willing to provide the same information that he, he ended up going to the newspaper was not sufficient for Ms. Gerbic. And mm-hmm. that yep. is uh, a bit of power that I think is uh, not wielded well. Certainly it doesn't make a lot of sense for say a well-known individual to find out that a web page is made on Wikipedia about them that people use as a resource to find out that uh, in- incorrect information cannot be corrected by that person, him or herself. Mm-hmm. And, and so the, the whole process really smacks of uh, lack of accountability and lack of a clear objective process to ensure that no one's, um, no one's reputation is sullied uh, inappropriately just because someone may not believe in the same things that that person does. Because if Mr. Elizondo Mm -hmm. was not uh, discussing UAPs, then perhaps they would not be uh, so inclined to create a web page or a Wikipedia page for him and have Mm -hmm. um, the perspective of that web page as denigrating. And it doesn't have to be UAPs. It can be any number of, as you said, Uh, particular topics that they don't agree with because it doesn't match their uh, belief system. And uh, so this certainly is something that does not need to fade away because it will continue to be problematic for anybody who finds himself in the same uh, situation. And that because they, whatever it is that they are espousing, that because these particular groups or groups doesn't like it that they are going to write things that could be perceived as dis- disparaging. Um, mm-hmm. So, and, uh, and this, they don't just go after the message; they also go after the messenger, and with malice because they dehumanize them, they ridicule them, and cajole them, and disparage them. Um, frankly, they they treat some of them uh, worse than criminals. Uh, that they don't even the treatment that they that I have witnessed of, of their edits and it, it's expansive that they, what, what, they what? do not even recognize that these are human beings with feelings and rights. So, so, so what kind of communication would they share with each other about a particular person who's, uh, that, whose uh, work they don't respect or that doesn't fit within their worldview of legitimacy? What kind of communications would they have back and forth? Would they, be disparaging? Would they make fun of that person? Mm-hmm. How, how would they? Oh, yeah. How would they, the, the, uh, most people go that go onto the platform look at the page itself, but they don't look at the talk pages and they don't go into the admin boards. They don't search that person's name to see what's being said about them in other places where they have ongoing panels of discussion where they where they ridicule these people. Um, for instance, like with Elizondo's page, 
um, Susan Gerbic wrote that um, she heard that Lou was hiring a lawyer to try and get his web his wiki page corrected. He, she, she wrote, "Oh, how cute! I created his page. I you know I enjoy watching him try and uh, you know, basically squirm in trying to get it corrected, you know, with accurate information, knowing that she has incorrect information in there with it." Um, another instance I saw with Bob Lazar, and you don't have to agree with a man and what he's sure. espousing, but you do need to, you know, he's a human being. I, I saw where Lucky Louie wrote to another editor that um, they want, if they could find, you know, Wikipedia, the the guerrilla skeptics understand that the first two sentences of any article are the most important. Lucky Louie was canvassing with another editor on the talk page for Bob Lazar that if they could find more mainstream articles that called him a felon, then they could get that move from the his article up into the first two sentences to say Bob Lazar, you know, felon Bob Lazar, a conspiracy theorist. That you know, they've already got conspiracy theorist in there as, as his main label, but they wanted to get felon in there with it to denigrate him as much as they possibly can. That that is that that's just malicious. What can people do to support you? What kind of resources do you need in order to fight this? well-organized group of individuals who want to control Wikipedia through their cabal. If they've got um, representatives that they can contact to alert to this, if they know people in the media, um, they can test, they can go on Twitter and check my uh, posts and, and read through those and check my work. Don't believe what I'm saying. Verify it, please. Um, and, and test my hypothesis. Go in and try and make a good faith edit on your pages to see you know, on any page, actually, if you're an authority on it, or you don't have to be an authority, just have a well, a good, valid source of information and try to edit a page uh, and, and see what happens. If it's on, if it happens to have a contentious topic listed at the bottom or pseudoscience or, or skepticism project, um, you may not even be able to put an edit into that page. Uh, you'll have to put it in the talk page because they'll have it locked down and only they can edit it. But test my hypothesis. Try and make a good faith edit. Don't be malicious. Be polite. Have a good source and try, you know, make sure you know the rules of, of at least the basics to edit it in in good faith w with a good source. Just start out small and see what happens. Just test my hypothesis. But if they know senators or, you know, congressmen, their representatives, uh, media outlets, uh, college, you know, college um, leadership, um, reach out to people. Um, word of mouth with this, just just get the word out that this needs to be heard. And I'll check with YouTube, see why they they adopted Wikipedia as a source for information. You know, people can take up those torches and and get back with me. Let me know what you find out. You know, I I would like the feedback. If if I don't respond in a DM, you know, get hold of you or Shan or anybody that is closely project, and we just need to raise the, the awareness wherever people can. Right. And I just want to have a little clarity on what you just said. Are there pages uh, that you said they're locked down for in order for someone to make a change or a correction? Do they essentially have to ask permission of these editors in order to make those changes? Or are they allowed? You yes. said it's locked they, they down. Will tell you, they will write on the top. You would have to write on the talk page what your, you would have to propose what your edit is, put your source in there, and request that they add it to the article. And they will decide if it's going to be added or not. If you try and edit it in, if they haven't got it locked yet and they don't agree with it, then they may get it locked. And then they will issue you warnings on your talk page that you are editing a contentious topic and if you try and do it more than once, uh, edit, then you'll be warned that your edit warning, which they don't like to issue the edit warning. They like to wait and let you do it three times so they can ban you from the platform. So I don't advise that. But yeah, you have to ask permission on pages that are protected because they essentially, they're the only ones that can edit them and you have to get permission. Yeah, that doesn't sound very democratic to me. Mm -mm. Uh, especially and you if, cannot get another yeah, admin to back you up, right? Yeah, I was going to say, you especially go if you're them. Say, I was going to say, especially yeah. if you're a subject matter expert and you see an obvious mistake and you want to fix it and you're told, oh, you can't make any changes. You have to request mm -hmm. yeah. our permission yep. and get our approval in order for those changes to be made. And these are people who are not in any way That's right. in a position to be able to be expert 
at, at the, the, the topic that is being discussed. So it's basically an opinion page. Yeah, and if you try to bring another editor in to get consensus or majority, then they will ban you for canvassing. They, they might warn you for that one. Don't recruit other editors that are like-minded with you to go against their like-minded editors group because they will ban you from the platform for that. They do it all the time. So yeah, I, I'm not busy out. archiving lists. That. Yeah, that's knocking out the competition. <laughs> mm -hmm. wow. Yeah, exactly. It's like well, a game of risk. I could write the rules out. And what, what, I can, what I can compare it to best is the board game of risk of global conquest. They are, they are gaining territory every day. They know that. They're eliminating competition. They see it as sport. They, some of them I see enjoy it like a cat with a mouse. They, they are on a power trip, and there, there's no competition. They rule it. They know they own Wikipedia. Well, I think the rest of the world needs to know that, too. And, and, Absolutely. Uh, and and, you and I want to yeah, thank you, Rob. Even though this is your interview of me, I recognize mm -hmm. your subject matter expertise in, in this area. And so that's why. I was asking you those questions because I legitimately yeah, want I, to know the answers. Yeah, I appreciate that. I appreciate but it what, because you're, you're asking a lot of good questions. Well, one thing that I did not ask is you said that people could contact you, but how? How can they contact What's the best way to contact you? If you're not following me on Twitter uh, or if I'm not following them, if you can't get my attention on, on Twitter, I, I'm kind of hesitate to give out my email right now because no, uh, no. there's a lot what, of people your, that are very upset with me. Right. No, what's your Twitter uh, information. It's I think it's a Rob Heatherly one is my at. It's under my name Rob Heatherly at Rob Heatherly one I believe is what it is. And we can put the link in the description of this YouTube video you know, when it's pushed out. Um, I'll let Shannon know to do that, and that way people can find me there, or they can they can they can leave a comment on this uh, channel on this uh, video, and uh, you know we'll respond to that. That would be a good way to contact me. Well, I, I have to thank you again for all the hard work you're doing and and taking the time to explain it so that lay persons like myself can uh, understand how this uh, misinformation is taking place. Well, if you had the time to put in, I'm sure it would be something that you would be well versed on as well. I just have more time on my hands than the average person. So uh, and I'm determined. Uh, I don't like seeing this being wielded and the people deceived. So uh, I'm not going to let it lie. Well, it's it's uh, it's been a wonderful discussion. Uh, and I think we've covered a lot of ground. At least I I hope we have. Yeah. Uh, but Rob, yeah, you definitely. Tell me. Yeah, Rob's uh, the man. It's been an honor to have is. you. Oh man, it's my pleasure. It's been it's and, been an honor to have you. Yeah, and I, I'm big fans of you guys, as you know. So uh, we're in this oh, together. You. Likewise, all, all of us are. We're to, all, at least I'm trying to pull my weight a little bit, just trying to make sure that I'm contributing as much as I can to to the cause. You, so I appreciate you guys. And you, well, yep. uh, it's only two hours and twenty three minutes, Rob. You're doing wow. great. Wow. I was I, I am, wasn't keeping track of I am time. Like I was hell. wondering if we had reached an hour. But uh, well, the th no, you probably have. It's just that Rob was talking before we got brought you on. Oh, okay, gotcha. And so, and I did the yeah, intro. Yeah, we were on for nearly an hour. So, where? Yeah, you? so yeah. Yeah, he, oh he forgot. I was waiting. I was you forgot to waiting. tell you because I, I thought he told you. Messages. We're getting ready. We're setting up. No, the I thing like, is, okay. if, if I give you the link, you can go ahead and come in, and I can just pop you out. I pop right. you yeah, in at any time. You didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. It's been uh, fun, gentlemen. Dr. Keith Taylor, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, hopefully, we'll see you again. This uh, journey that Rob is on, it's um, I think it's going to make history. I really do. It's um, the team that he's assembled, the dedication, the time he's already put in. I think the next step is just getting the word out to the folks about what's going on with Wikipedia and the Gorilla Skeptics and Lucky Louie and others. And um, Hopefully, mm -hmm. uh, we'll all cross that finish line together. It's been a pleasure I'm looking and forward honor. to it. It's been a pleasure and honor right. to, uh, to have this discussion with you guys. So thank you. All right, Doc. See you, see you soon. All right. Take thank care. Bye-bye. Okay. Right. Hey, Rob, is there anything else you'd like to add? <laughs> no. Uh, roll that bean footage. I'll take care, all right? Nothing but love for you. Nothing but love for you. You think they have any clue what's about to happen to them? Oh, no chance in hell. Good night.